Today we're doing the new member tag video and that's basically any new addition to your shave den. So I've chosen the Simpson Trafalgar T3. I'll be giving you my first impressions on this brush coming right up. Welcome to the Lather Hog channel where we bring you fresh shaving content weekly. I'm your host John and thank you so much for joining me today. My friend and fellow YouTuber Melly Bell Shaves recently tagged me in the new member tag video where basically we're spotlighting one brand new item in our shave den. Now what I'm using today is the Simpson Trafalgar T3 brush and this is a fairly new uh, synthetic offering from Simpson Brushes, you know one of those classic brands uh, based in the UK. Now the cool thing about the Trafalgar is that this is a very very budget friendly price brush it comes in at just under $25 uh, USD, at least at the time of this recording. So I'm really excited to check this out. It's a very, it's a pretty, it's a big knot. I believe this is 26 millimeters and appears to be fairly dense. Some of you might have seen my recent post uh, on this brush, as well as the Omega Evo, another synthetic offering from a classic brand. I'll be doing an in-depth video on both of those brushes, but today at least we'll see how it goes for the very first shave. Now before we get into the shave, let me show you what other gear I'll be using. For the razor, we're going with the Tatara Masamune Dark, and this is outfitted with a Gillette Silver Blue on second shave. And for my soap, we're also going with a new addition to my den, that's from Spearhead Shaving Company, and this is Experimental Artisan Shave Soap 20.1, and the scent here is Citrus, Amber, and Musk. And this is uh, the final production formula that Spearhead has going, is going with. A Spearhead has actually announced the first non-experimental, but you know, full-on run uh, that'll go on you know, for a larger batch, go on for a little longer, and that scent is in oak moss and sandalwood, and I'll throw a picture right up so you can see. It's got some very nice, you know, bright green artwork there. I also want to make sure I showed you the actual soap itself, which is very dark, chocolatey brown. Uh, this is, you know, due to vanillin being found in the fragrance here. It is citrus, uh, amber, and musk. Uh, it's quite powerful. Uh, Dennis, uh, the, the artisan behind the company, actually gave me a warning. It's, that's quite punchy. Um, it is very strong. I was like, oh, it's not that bad when I first opened it from, uh, you know, from shipping. But I left it open in my office and it just filled the room with the scent. Now, the good thing is, while super strong, I actually quite enjoy it. Uh, it's a very rich citrus. It's on the it's on the sweeter side, but it's still within. You know, it's not too sweet for me. So I'm looking really forward to see uh, how this how the scent changes, but also how this performs um, the soap formula rather compared to 17.1. Finally, for the post shave, I'm gonna go with Fine L'Orange Noir uh, with a few drops of the Rescue Potion by Zangari Man. Now for this video, I'm actually recording in the afternoon, so uh, I'm usually an evening shower. So for pre-shave, uh, what I usually do, I, mean, I usually rely on that shower, but times I don't, I go with a hot towel, washcloth, whatever, like so. Kind of just apply it to the face, soft, soften the whiskers. I have two days worth of beard growth. I don't have an exact time of how long I hold the face towel for, but probably between five and 10 seconds. All right, so I've wet the brush, so let's get to lathering. Now into the face lather. And I do wanna say that the soap just really exploded. I have from, uh, heard that uh, this iteration the final iteration from Spearhead is uh, is just stupidly easy to form a lather. And just in loading the brush, that was very much the case. And this is going on um, very easily as well. One thing I did forget to mention is that with such a dark soap or any kind of oddly colored soap, you wanna make sure, you know, don't use a, if you've never used it before, don't go with your most expensive natural hair brush. Use a synthetic knob first, or at least an inexpensive brush. Because the last thing you wanna do is really, is dye your precious brush a color that you don't want. So another good reason why I want to pair, you know, this synthetic brush to try it out, of course, but that it's 
you know, the knot itself, I'm not too worried about um, getting dyed by a super dark soap. I do want to thank uh, viewers for their feedback. For these new soaps or unfamiliar soaps, I definitely want to show you know, the, kind of the full process of me building the lather to the point of um, what I'm going to shave with. It gives you an idea of kind of the thirst, thirstiness of a, of a particular soap, what texture to expect. I'm really loving this knot, I have to say. So paint, these paintbrush strokes will really benefit from it. It displays too if you like to sma smash that brush in there. I like to throw in a few, a few swirls in to agitate, uh, agitate the lather. I know some folks are strictly <laughs> no smushing. And that's fine. I mean, it's one of those things where there's no right or wrong way. You can see too, the lather's been changing color as I've been adding water and building it. Where it was probably like a lightish tan color, almost like a cappuccino. It is is pretty much just like maybe off-white at this point. Granted, the lighting in my bathroom might might tweak that a little bit. Okay, I'm liking how this is looking. It is definitely nowhere near as thirsty as 17.1 was, and this is just I think really easy to work with, so it's beginner friendly. I think that's actually a big, uh, a big point of uh, Spearhead going with this formulation. They want a soap that's easy to work with, and the thirst I would say is moderate. I mean, I could I could push it a little bit more. This is about where I, I like it. So I'm gonna rinse my hands off of the lather <laughs> and then we'll get into the shave. All right, here we go in with the Masamune Dark. This is gliding with no problem whatsoever. All right, this is looking to be a very good first pass shave. I'm gonna rinse off and we'll go in for the, uh, to relather and for the second pass. So one thing I did differently was use my, the face towel to wipe off the excess lather from the first, you know, from the first pass. And it's definitely much cleaner than <laughs> what I usually do, splashing water making a total mess out of my bathroom. So that was an unexpected lesson learned. We'll see. I don't wanna use like too many towels per shave, but 
it, it's definitely for, for a kind of compact bathroom, uh, which I have, um, you know, anytime I can minimize mess, it'd be a great thing. Now I do have to apologize. I'm not entirely sure that this is a 26 millimeter nut. Yes? Hi, buddy. I'm not live. I'm recording, but I'm not live. Uh, you need something? No. Does it look good? Your soap smells good. You like this? It's the citrus amber musk. Is that the one you smell? Yeah. It's a very strong smell. All right, let's lather up some more. Now I do have to apologize. I had a chance to get this shave in and didn't didn't double check to confirm that this is in fact a 26 millimeter knot. If it's not, I will make sure to add the correction. But I do know that the handle, while not like a full on like chubby size, it's it's a little it's a little, a little thicker. But it's got a really good grip. I think you know it's it's like a cream cream bone you know, off white color. Just a very nice classic look. So even here you can see it's still going fairly pasty. Maybe because I wiped up a lot of the excess water that was on my face. Uh, definitely need more water than this. Very much so. I, I'm really digging, digging this brush, right out the gate, right out the gate. There's enough backbone, but still has splay. It's a, it's a fairly dense knot. For for synthetic. Kind of checks all the checks all the boxes that I'm looking for. Now in Mel's video, um, the person who tagged me, he, his new the new member that he kind of spotlighted was the uh, was the big blade. And it got me thinking that I, I haven't really tried a new blade in a while. I found a few that work for me. Um, Pulse Silver Super Radium is my favorite. Uh, Gillette Silver Blue, Astra SP, Feather. And then I have some, I have a, a few packs of uh, Vascod. That, that might be it. I have like one pack of Kai blades that I haven't I haven't gotten to, but I don't try blade. I mean, there was a time I used a tryblade.com and tried all, all sorts, but those are kind of the ones that uh, have worked for me. And I'll be sure to be uh, t tagging three more folks um, for this video. And I'm not sure if it's limited to hardware. I think it's fairly flexible. Just whatever is new to your den. It doesn't have to be a brand new release product by any means. Okay. There we go. Very creamy, not super voluminous, but does a trick. I'm gonna raise the hands and we'll get into the second pass.
So this week was a bit busier for me as far as work-wise. And I, I still had, a, even then I still had a hard time keeping the day straight. One really blends into the other. All I know is that it was busy enough that once Friday hit, I was relieved. Even if it really means we're still on lockdown and not really going anywhere for the weekend, but just having you know, just having more flexibility in in this both my schedule and my wife's schedule. Uh, we're both working from home right now and have uh, have a seven and a four year old. And it's always uh, good to you know kind of appreciate what we can um, in in challenging circumstances or situations. So for me, um, I think it's good to share what I'm thankful for for this week. Um, I've been playing. So I, I'm a big fan of video games, and my son and I—he's uh, a seven-year-old—have been playing a lot of Animal Crossing: New Horizons. If you are playing that game as well, and you want to exchange Nintendo Switch friend codes, hit me up. We're only, we're still pretty early in the game. We've played for just over like maybe a week and a half, but we play daily and it's fun. The other cool part is that my son's really developed a love of board games which both me and my wife love board games. Um, if you're familiar with like Settlers of Catan, um, even more casual games, I, I don't know why, it's like nothing's coming to my head. A Ticket to Ride, uh, kind of these newer uh, newer board games. Uh, we played a lot uh, before having kids, played less so after we had our kids. But kind of since, you know, we can't really go out anywhere, can't go out to movies, can't go out to restaurants or whatever. Uh, we've been playing more more board games, and with his birthday recently passing, um, beginning of April, um, I think we got Kids of uh, sorry Catan Junior, and some other games that we had around like Quarkle, Carcassonne. Uh, each every game we played, he's liked. So I mean that's uh, I don't know, that's a great discovery. Monopoly Deal was a good one as well. So we do love games in this household, video games, board games. We're, we're very much homebodies, so it's nice to be able to kind of share in some of these quieter hobbies. All right, let me rinse off again, and we'll do a touch-up pass. So we've been getting by, um, you know, I do say that my, my, my mood fluctuates really day to day. Certainly can get moody sometimes. <laughs> and, you know, the shave and whatever kind of content creation stuff um, for this hobby is always a nice mental break to, you know, Leave some of that stress rattled up in there. And I do just hope that um, yeah, everyone watching out there that you are staying safe. That you have someone to talk to, a hobby or activities that can take your mind um, you know, off of the a very scary situation happening outside. For those who are on the front lines and still, you know, still going out working, thank you guys. Um, I know not everyone has the luxury of working from home, and um, uh, it's important to remind myself of that. All right, so ready for this last touch-up pass?
So needless, needless to say, going back to the brush, very impressed, very happy, you know, very positive feelings coming out of this first shave with it. And this soap is no slouch either. It is, it is strongly scented. Um, if I were to give it a rating, I'd probably give this a seven or eight out of 10. Kind of on par with some of the strong, more strongly scented soaps from A&D. This is even kind of a scent that I could see um, Peter, uh, Peter putting out. It is missing though, tobacco and oud, which I feel like Peter is using a lot of that, <laughs> those two scent notes. All right, doing, drying off here with the ever excellent Lancaster Razorworks Black Sheep Towel. I know these are snatched up really quick whenever Andre um, releases some. He's done some in red, white, and blue, very patriotic as well. So it is super plush. I, I know, you know, people are like, what's the big deal about a, a towel? But not all microfiber towels are made the same. I'm sure for anyone who has bought them for household use, you know, you have thinner ones, thicker ones, and they, they very much um, vary in quality, but very solid one. Actually also really good to uh, polish and kind of finish razors. Doesn't matter so much, you know, this one's the, the Masamune is this matte black, but for those that are chrome, stainless steel, etc., cetera, it, it kind of functions well as that, besides just doing a great job drying your face. As I mentioned, we're gonna finish off with L'Orange Noir by Fine. This is a dupe of Terre Hermes, known for kind of blood orange and vetiver scents, kind of earthy. Some people will find vetiver to be old manish. I guess I can kind of see that. It's definitely masculine and, and earthy. But I really like how it's it's kind of um, balanced out by the citrus. So it's one where I have the Eau de Parfum. Uh, it's a fragrance I enjoy wearing more in the cooler months, I mean, fall and winter. It's a nice compliment to the, the Spearhead soap, which again, the scent was citrus, amber, and musk. I'm also still working with a Cute little sample of the Rescue Potion by Zingari Man that came in a uh, order. I think it came in my uh, order for Blacksmith, which was the soap for for our wet shaving on Reddit. Did two drops in my hands here and just gonna apply it on top. <laughs> I have some visitors, some small visitors crashing the video. I definitely had to make a cut there as they were bringing stuff into the bathroom and that's a no-no. All right, so no nicks or cuts, uh, even just for my own, you know, foolishness, I'll, I'll sometimes nick myself with even the most familiar of razor, you know, hardware or software, but um, really good shave, really happy with it. I am batting two for two with Spearhead. So yeah, so if you're at all curious about that brand, uh, again, finally, instead of these small little batch, test batches, experimental batches, um, uh, Dennis is coming out with a full line uh, in, in this you know, finalized soap base, oak moss and sandalwood. If that sounds good to you, um, be sure, uh, I'll include a link to the website down below. I bought these soaps. Um, he's not paying me anything to, to plug it. I'm just super happy with the products that he's, he's um, putting out and want to see folks in the community support him. All right, so now that we're done with the shave, let me choose three more folks to keep the tag going. So for the new member tag video, uh, let's see Josh over at Red Beard Shaves is one. For number two, uh, HD from HD Shaves. And finally, number three, uh, let me tag Rick from Loose Screw Shaving, recently rebranded from Sense Suds and Steels. So if you know Rick from Sense Suds and Steel, he is now Loose Screw Shaving.
All right, so that concludes today's shave. I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.